Good day everyone, this is Yeshua Said My Name and I hope the day is finding you doing well. I hope that you are focusing on the Lord and not your own circumstances. And you know, I want to tell you from a personal testimony of my own this morning, that is a lot easier said than done. Um, I, you know, I've walked with the Lord intimately for years and He is our strength and an ever-present help in trouble. However, we are living in this fallen flesh and this fallen world where there are days where we will literally watch the hours on the clock spin, whether it's due to our depression, whether it's due to our anxieties, whether it's due to the troubles of this world, and wonder how we are gonna put one foot forward to make it through one more day. And I'm here to tell you that you're not alone, that all of us will go through these times. Uh, scripture tells us that there is nothing you are going through that is not common to man. It is said of Christ, our own high priest, that he has been through everything that we have been through, but without sin, and that he was despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with bitterest grief. I know what it is to go through bitter grief. I know what it is to go through turmoil. I know what it is to go through loneliness, depression, uh, losing those that we love, trying to fill a gap in our hearts that can no longer be filled any longer. Uh, I had a recent subscriber ask me to do a video on uh, just mentioning depression, uh, mentioning hardship and getting through one day to another. Uh, I'm here to tell you it isn't easy, okay? And just because we are born again believers in Yeshua does not mean that we are not subject to the same uh, struggles in life. This is a race to the finish. And we need to have our eyes on the goal, which is Christ. And remember that Christ in you okay is what we need to focus on that we have been bought with a price we are not our own that we must present our bodies as living sacrifices and that through christ all things are possible what is impossible with this flesh is possible with christ you're not alone uh, i myself have gone through i'd say over the last two or three years more grief more depression uh physical ailments then i i'm not if i were to speak on them uh, I, I mean, I can make you a video for two hours, but I'm not going to do that and bore you to death. But I understand what it is to struggle with the grief of losing people you love, uh, of crying out in the night to God for that, console, that consoling that sometimes just doesn't seem to come. I know what it's like to struggle with uh, physical ailments that just don't seem to want to leave. And even if you ask a doctor to help you, uh, there's only so much they can do, all right? And we are completely, I believe, allowed to go through these things at times to put our soul dependence on Christ to get us through. Uh, there's a few topics I have in my mind as we get into this video. Uh, actually, this is going to be a live chat, not a live stream. Sometimes when I put up a live chat, many people are a premiere. Some people uh, mistakenly believe that it is a live stream. I prefer to do live chats. Uh, where I can chat with you live and fellowship with you live. That's just my way. Um, every now and then, maybe I'll put up a live stream, but for now, uh, we're going to do live chats with premieres. But I have a list of things I want to discuss with you during this video, during this uh, live chat premiere, uh, that I hope will be a blessing to you. First of all, I'm asking for prayer. Uh, I received a couple of emails um, that I originally had posted on the uh, community section of this channel and I took down because I wanted to be sure that I had confirmation before I went public with it. Uh, I have received uh, an email from a subscriber who I will uh, leave anonymous at the moment unless uh, this person gives me their permission to share it. Uh, they are trying to uh, get me a connection with brother L.A. Marzulli. Okay. So if that happens, whether I am invited on his show to speak about the topics he discusses, which Brother Marzulli and I are at 100% agreement on, about the Nephilim and the fallen angels and um, this uh, burgeoning UFO phenomena, uh, if the Lord allows, because all things are of the Lord and he is sovereign, if he allows this meeting and this introduction to take place between Brother L.A. Marzulli and myself, it will be of the Holy Spirit. But I wanted to tell you there is a possibility of that, and if you would be in prayer, that the Lord would, if it is his will, allow that. If not, and it is not his will, then I ask your prayer for this channel then, that the Lord will continue to use this channel to send the word forth to expose Ephesians 5.11, the deeds of darkness. 
So I wanted to share that bit of excitement with you that it could be that uh, Brother Ellie and I could be uh, meeting one another. Uh, either I will be interviewing him or he will have me, whichever, um, however the Lord sovereignly determines. But I wanted to share that good news with you. Uh, I wanted to bring to your attention uh, something I haven't brought up in a while. Uh, the Pope has recently signed an interfaith climate agreement with Dubai, apparently. And I wanted to mention to you that this beast system, this whole uh, New World Order agenda, uh, is all about climate. A lot of it is pagan, earth, uh, Gaia worship, uh, and so on. And he had just signed uh, an interfaith agreement in Dubai with these people on, on uh, you know, of course, what else is new, bringing faiths together and focusing on Gaia, which is Mother Earth, which we know is pagan. So piggybacking on that topic, I wanted to play for you a video that I haven't played for you in a while. I think it's been several months, but I wanted to play it for you on my phone since, again, like I said, my laptop uh, is the internal microphone is not functioning properly and until I can afford to get a new laptop I'm gonna have to play you these videos on my phone I'd much rather just give it to you straight from the computer however um, but let me play this for you for those of you who are not familiar with this video it's an interfaith video of Pope Francis uh, showing how he wants to unite the world's religions as one he wears sheep's clothing, and Christ tells us to be careful of those who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly are ravenous wolves, okay? So this man dressed in white vestments while everyone else wears black and dark colors around him, parading around with people bowing at his feet and kissing his hand, is proclaiming a one-world religion. He claims the name of Christ, but he, call, he allows people to bow at his feet, kiss his hand, worship at his feet, and call him the Holy Father, which is taking the name of our Father in heaven alone, which is utter blasphemy. In the book of Revelation, John fell at the feet of the angel. And what did the angel tell John? Stand up, do not do it, for I am a fellow servant with you. Worship God. We're also going to be getting into discussing prayer to Mary, and I received a comment recently on one of my very old videos that I did, I'd say two or three years ago, um, about the, uh, the heresy of seeking the dead in prayer. And I have a comment on my phone that I'm going to read to you from this subscriber that I think very adequately describes, and I will give credit to this commenter, all right, the subscriber. Uh, of her comment about seeking the dead and about praying to Mary and what her particular answer is to Roman Catholics when they ask people, well, what's so wrong with praying to the dead or praying to Mary to intercede for us before God? All right, well, those of us who know the Lord Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach, know that he is our only intercessor between God and man. It is very clear in the scriptures. We have one intercessor, Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus. We don't have two, three, four, five, or ten. Necromancy is seeking the dead, and with this is prohibited and is an abomination in the eyes of God. So that is yet another subject we will be discussing in this live premiere live chat, okay? Uh, we'll also uh, be discussing a show called The Chosen. I don't know if you're familiar with this show. Uh, you can play the show on uh, Amazon. Uh, I don't know if you've seen it. I have my own opinion of it. Uh, I'll leave that subjectively up to you. I just figured I wanted to know in the chat as we're live chatting with one another what you think about The Chosen and if you've given it a chance prayerfully to watch it. Uh, so I, I want to start off by playing this video for you, this interfaith video of Pope Francis for those who may not be familiar with having seen this video before. Here we are. La mayor parte de los habitantes del planeta se declaran creyentes. Esto debería provocar un diálogo entre las religiones. No debemos dejar de orar por él y colaborar con quienes piensan distinto. Confío en Buda. Creo en Dios. Creo en Jesucristo. Creo en Dios. Alá. Muchos piensan distinto sienten distinto, buscan a Dios o encuentran a Dios de diversa manera. En esta multitud, en este abanico de religiones, hay una sola certeza que tenemos para todos. Todos somos hijos de Dios. No, we aren't. Creo en el amor. Creo en el amor. Creo en el amor. Creo 
romper el amor. Confío en vos para difundir mi petición de este mes. Que el diálogo sincero entre hombres y mujeres de diversas religiones conlleve frutos de paz y justicia. Confío en tu oración. Look at this blasphemy. Okay. What he is saying here, um, I speak Spanish fairly well. And what he was saying here was, todos somos hijos de Dios. No, what he is saying in that statement is we are all, we are all children of God. I want to make a correction there, Mr. Pope of Rome, and I hope you're watching this Vatican City State because I have no fear of you in the name of God. I, as a matter of fact, I would call them out to their face exactly what they are if the Lord ever gave me a chance to do so. All right. Uh, they, to say that we are all children of God is false. We're all creations of God. We are not, however, all children and sons and daughters of God. It states in the scriptures to those who believe on his name, meaning the name of Yeshua, gave he the power to become the sons of God. You must be born again of God's own spirit to be a son or daughter of God. You are not a son or daughter of God because you belong to a church denomination, whether Catholic or Protestant. That is not what makes you a son or daughter of God. We are all creations of God. However, we are not all born again of God's spirit, which makes us children of God. This video I just showed you, which I will play again later in the broadcast, is clearly outlining what is coming on this earth and what was uh, prophesied through Daniel and through the book of Revelation about a one world religion and a beast system that would bring all of this about. And you are watching this man, one of the, the many in the dynasty of the papal line, present you all of these different pagan religions coming together and all claiming to be the truth. What is it? Are you going to listen to the words of Jesus, those of you who are listening to this and possibly think I'm just making this up? Jesus himself said, I am the way, the truth, the life. No one comes unto the Father except by me. Now that's not my words. That's not YSMN's words. Those are the, the words of your Savior who hung on the cross for you. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no one comes unto the Father except through me. Watching this video, if anything, should show you what a ravenous wolf he is, dressed in sheep's clothing, which is what Jesus reminded us of, warned us of. He said, be careful that no man deceive you, for many will come in my name claiming I am he. This Pope of Rome, I've proved to you throughout different videos, down throughout the centuries, has claimed to be God on earth. And if you doubt this as well, if you're a new subscriber, please backtrack to my other videos earlier on in this channel where I prove to you, not only from the Vatican system, but through many cardinals, bishops, and nuns, direct quotes with naming pages and sources where they not only worship the Pope as God on earth, but the Pope himself declares himself God on earth which in my opinion is the fulfillment of Daniel's prophecy. For he shall exalt himself, he will exalt himself, this line of the papal dynasty above all that is called God and declare himself God on earth. So what I wanna do also is, oh my, there's so much to get into. I wish I had just literally just hours and hours and every day to just cover everything that I feel passionate about that God's put on my heart. But I thank him for the time that he does give me. Um, I wanted to, again, discuss, uh, you know, the Pope Interfaith, like I said, the Pope Interfaith Movement, um, uh, play you this video, which I will play again, um, uh, and uh, discuss with you how he is a wolf in sheep's clothing, trying to convince people of this world that he, that all faiths, regardless of what God you adhere to, uh, are fine are going to heaven. I'm not trying to scare anyone here, but if you stand before the Lord one day as your judge, because scripture says it is appointed unto man once to die and then the judgment. If you stand before Christ one day and say, well, I believed in Allah. I believed in Buddha. I believed I was a good person. I went to mass every week. I was a good Baptist and I was baptized and I sat in that pew every week. God, Jesus said, not everyone, Jesus said this, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven. But only he or she who does the will of my Father in heaven. 
And what is the will of our Father in heaven? That we look to the Son of God alone for our salvation. That is his will, and that is what is in the scripture. If you are relying on your religious traditions, a pope, a bishop, a cardinal, a priest, a pastor, your good works, the Lord will say to you, as he clearly stated in the Gospels, depart from me, I never knew you. And this is not to frighten you, this is to speak the absolute truth of the word of God and warn you in these last days. What if this was, you know, I try and make videos, believe it or not. As I pray before I make a video, I try and say, Lord, what if this were my last day on earth? What if I'm not guaranteed to live the rest of this day? I'm not even guaranteed to live tomorrow, wake up tomorrow. What if I don't? Am I proclaiming a message that not only honors God, but warns people in love about eternal issues? Am I doing that? I hope I am. And I hope that you will too. None of us are promised tomorrow. None of us are. Uh, I want to go over, like I said with you, a comment that I received on a video that I did, I guess it's been two or three years now, uh, that I did on ex-Catholic nun exposes worship of Mary, okay? And like I said, this video is probably two or three years old now, so again, backtrack a little bit, but ex-Catholic nun exposes worship of Mary. So this video was about a, an, an ex-nun who essentially became a whistleblower, okay, and exposed the worship of Mary. And remember, a couple of videos back, I showed you even in a common dictionary how the word venerate means to worship. And, and you can find this in any dictionary. You can find this uh, online on Google to venerate means to worship. And many people will tell you, oh, we, Catholics will tell you, oh, we don't worship Mary. We just venerate her. No, venerate means to worship. Uh, Catholic doctrine calls her a co-mediatrix, okay? That she is a co-mediator, that she has also worked with her son to bring about salvation in this world. That is absolute heresy. Satan is blinding people's eyes. He comes as an angel of light, okay? Uh, you know, you don't infiltrate your enemy on the front lines looking like the enemy. Satan is going to infiltrate the people of God looking like the people of God. He is going to infiltrate the front lines looking like you. Holding a Bible in their hands. How many Jesuits are now standing in pulpits preaching Jesuit doctrines but people don't know because they don't read the word of God for themselves? They're going to come standing in pulpits looking like sheep. <laughs> you know, it's... Scripture says that God does not see as man sees. For God looks on, uh, on the heart... Man looks on the outward appearance. And I am warning you now, if you are putting all your faith and all your hope in a Pope of Rome, in the Vatican system, and I'm not just picking on Catholics, I'm sorry, Protestants, but if you are sitting in your pews every week saying, well, Pastor so-and-so told me, whatever denomination you are, that ain't enough. You need to be getting alone with the Holy Spirit, opening up his word, and letting his spirit teach you what you need to know about the truth. He is your teacher, Jesus said. I alone am your teacher. You have no need of any other. As a matter of fact, it was prophesied in Old Testament scriptures that once his spirit was given within us, God himself said, no longer will one man have to teach another, know the Lord, for they will all know me, from the least of them to the greatest. And Jesus said what? You have one teacher, the Christ. Please take this to heart. I am not saying there is no benefit with fellowshipping with a body of believers. What I'm saying is don't leave it at that. Please seek, get alone with the Holy Spirit and ask him, Lord, is what I've been taught of man or is it of you? I'm begging you to do this. Remember, none of us are guaranteed tomorrow. You're not even guaranteed to finish out this day. I'm not. That's why I'm begging God to please use this channel if something were to happen to me that hopefully years from now, as long as the Lord allows this channel to remain on the internet, people can maybe click on a video and something may reach them. That is my passionate prayer. Getting back to this video I want to discuss with you and this one commenter who discussed Mary and, uh, you know, how I, you know, wanted to expose this, uh, discuss this nun. I, I really should re-upload it as something new for you, but... 
It's called Ex-Catholic Nun Exposes Worship of Mary. And that's a video I made a couple of years ago. All right, the subscriber's name, which I hope I can pronounce correctly. If you are watching this and I have mispronounced your name, please forgive me. Please pardon me. I will do my best to pronounce it. Gianni Hudson Mavris. Gianni Hudson Mavris wrote me an email, okay, just yesterday, stating, thanks for your message and testimony about this. Here's how I responded elsewhere to the idea of praying to Mary or any departed saints, meaning any of your loved ones who died in Christ as well. Praying to Mary and the saints is unbiblical, which we all know, okay? We all know that that are born-again believers. There's a difference between asking family or friends to pray for you, to praying to dead, then praying to dead people. Jesus is both mediator and intercessor. Now, let me hold right there for a moment. If Jesus is our example, did he ever pray to the dead when he walked this earth? No, he did not. He prayed to the Father. You never saw Jesus summoning the dead when he prayed. So if you are told to pray to someone who has passed from this world and is home with the Lord, if Jesus is our example, our only example, and we are to walk in the footsteps of the Lord himself, why would we pray to the dead when he himself did not? Food for thought. If Jesus is sufficient for both those roles, then why do we need to pray to Mary or one of the saints? When we tell someone, well, you know, I know Jesus loves me. He's up there. He's interceding for me 24-7 before the Father, but I still have to go here, 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 and here to have my prayers heard to the Father. That's baloney. Okay? And that's blasphemy. Um... So, if Jesus is sufficient for both those roles, then why do we need to pray to Mary or one of the saints, who, by the way, are dead and departed? Yes, they are alive in heaven. However, there is no scriptural basis for praying to them. Rather, the opposite is true. Intercession is biblical for you and I who are living to pray for one another, but not to pray to departed people. This is called necromancy, folks. Okay, this is my own addition here. Necromancy is seeking and praying to the dead, which is something that King Solomon did that the Lord called an abomination and told us not to do. However, nowhere in Scripture are we instructed to pray to the dead. The Bible is explicitly instructs us to call on God. Isaiah 8, 19 to 20, okay, someone may say to you, let's ask the mediums and those who consult the spirits of the dead. With their whisperings and mutterings, they will tell us what to do. And this is in Isaiah 8, 19 to 20. But shouldn't people ask God for guidance? Should the living seek the uh, guidance from the dead? Mm -mm. Look to God's instructions and teachings. People who contradict his word are completely in the dark. By praying to them, we are taking the attributes of God and placing them on mere humans. Only God is omnipresent and omniscient, knowing everything at all times. If the word of God tells us to come to him directly, then why do we need to pray to anyone else? Remember, it says we have a high priest who is directly in the Father's presence that makes intercession for us, how often? Constantly, without ceasing. It is Christ who died and furthermore is also risen, who is even at the right hand of the Father, who also makes intercession for us. Hebrews 4, 14 to 16. Seeing then that we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, Yeshua, the Son of God, let us hold fast our confession. For we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weaknesses, but was in all points tempted as we are yet without sin. Let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace that we may find help and mercy in time of need. Hebrews seven twenty three through 27 also, there were many priests because they were prevented by death from continuing. But he, because he, meaning Yeshua, Jesus, continues forever as an unchangeable priesthood. That's why there is no need, my dear Catholic friend, to go to a confession booth and tell a mere human being who did not die for you or pay your penalty of sin on the cross, your sin. You can go straight to the Lord Jesus Christ and confess your sin to him. It says it right here in Hebrews. For such a high priest was fitting for us who is holy, harmless, undefiled, separate from sinners, and has become higher than the heavens, who does not need daily as those high priests who offer up sacrifices. Now, let's stop there for a minute. What does the Catholic Church still do? They offer up daily sacrifices. 
literally subjecting Christ to being crucified every day during the Mass. What does it say here? In Scripture, which I'm sorry trumps any pope and any cardinal and any bishop and any priest and any pastor who tells you otherwise. Quote them this from Hebrews. Who does not, I'm sorry, for such a high priest, meaning Christ, was fitting for us and you, who is holy, harmless, undefiled, separate from sinners, and has become higher than the heavens, who does not need daily as those high priests to offer up sacrifices. To uh, First for his own sins and then for the people's. For this he did once for all, he offered up himself. Timothy 2.5, for there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus. Acts 4.12 states, for there is none, there is um, salvation in any other, no salvation in any other name given under heaven by which we must be saved, which is the name of Jesus. Jeremiah 29.12.13, then you will call on me, God says, and come and pray to me and I will listen to you. Jeremiah 29, 12 to 13, then you will call on me and come and pray to me and I will listen to you. Wow. You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all of your heart. Jeremiah 33, 3, call to me and I will answer you and tell you great and unsearchable things that you do not know. Romans, likewise, the Holy Spirit also helps us in our weaknesses for we do not know what we should pray as we ought, but the Spirit himself, who lives within you and I, if you're born again, makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. Now he who searches our hearts knows the mind of the Spirit, because he makes intercession for the saints according to the will of God. The Holy Spirit who lives in you once you've been born again, it says right here, makes intercession for you to the Father based on the Father's will, even when you don't know how to pray as you ought. Read these scriptures, friends. I'll post these scriptures down for you, okay? Jesus said in Matthew chapter 6, But when you pray, go into your room, and when you have shut your door, pray to your Father who is in secret. For your Father sees when you pray to him in secret and will reward you openly. All right? Um, let me go on down here. Uh, let me see. It's a little bit more. All right. Psalm 102, 17, for God will regard the prayer of the destitute and shall not despise their prayer. Psalm 145, 18 and 19, the Lord is near to all who call on him, to all who call upon him in truth. He's there for you. You have one intercessor. You have Christ interceding for you before the throne 24-7. You have the Holy Spirit of God, if you're born again, interceding for you with groanings that cannot be understood right before the throne room of God. You do not have a need for a pastor or a priest or a Pope of Rome to do this for you. And I'm saying this to you because you and I are not promised tomorrow. Where do you stand with the Lord? If you were to breathe your last tonight, are you relying on Christ alone to be your intercessor, to be the one who paid your sin debt? Or are you believing that somebody can purchase indulgences to get you out of purgatory, which is nowhere in scripture? Are you believing that a, a, a pope or a priest can stand over you and, lead, and read you last rites and somehow earn your way to heaven? Jesus died a humiliating, torturous death that we can't even begin to fathom to free you from sin. It says he became our sin. There is no man or woman on earth that can do that for you. And I promise you, if you do not believe that Christ says who he is and that he is sufficient, you will die in your sin. Can I make you believe this? Can I make anyone believe this? Here's any of the topics on this channel? Nope. As a matter of fact, none of the topics I talk about, whether it's the UFO phenomenon and exposing that and what Satan's doing with this, uh, exposing Freemasons and how Luciferian and Satanic Freemasons are, exposing Jesuits, exposing the Vatican in Rome and the papacy in Rome. None of these things I can say on this channel, no matter how passionate I get, will convince you. Why do I do it then? Because God commanded me to. Ephesians 5.11 says, Go, be my witnesses in all the earth. Go, expose the deeds of darkness, Ephesians 5.11. I do it out of obedience to him, not because I think I can persuade you. 
I'm doing it out of obedience to him, and you should go and do likewise. And I try and teach on things that I believe are something you may not hear very often in pulpits, and that's one of the reasons why I try and cover this fallen angel UFO phenomenon. Uh, I've even briefly mentioned uh, the Sasquatch phenomenon. Uh, I have had not only... (laughs) Again, I'm not trying to convince you or anybody else. I, I, I can't do that, okay? Only the Holy Spirit can do that. But they're real. And I've had not only my own experiences with them, but uh, my sister and her husband and their property have had experiences with them. Um, I have visual proof. I have video proof. Uh, interaction proof. Um, and maybe one day, God willing, I will expose that on this channel. However, they are, I truly believe, a descendant of the Nephilim. We are in the days of Noah, like, like, like Genesis chapter 6 and like Jude spoke about and the book of Revelation spoke about. Uh, these beings that are going out to the kings of the earth and working with them to make war with Christ when he returns uh, that look like frogs, I believe we're hearing about in the news now. Uh, Ronald Reagan spoke to the United Nations telling people, how quickly the world's differences would fall away if we were faced with some kind of outside alien threat. Friends, this is simply, this this is simply prophecy being fulfilled, okay? The governments of the world know who they're working with. They act like they're ignorant. Oh, we don't want to tell the public. We don't want to scare people. They know what they're doing. According to the very word of God, the kings of the earth know who they're working with. And I truly believe they know they're trying to prevent the return of Christ. They believe Satan, working with the kings of the earth, his fallen angels, these uh, uh, demonic beings, the, 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 the modern-day Nephilim, they know they're building an army in this world, according to Revelation, to try and stand against the Almighty, which is Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ, when he returns to this world to set up his earthly kingdom. They know what they're doing. As a matter of fact, I could find you, um, most likely, Ronald Reagan's speech to the UN. I don't know if you're uh, familiar with that or not. While I'm looking this up, though, I wanted to mention to you um, I, I, okay, I think I found it. I wanted to mention to you uh, brother Scott Carpenter. Uh, he is a Christian brother who has done numerous videos on the Sasquatch phenomenon uh, and why he believes they are descendants of the Nephilim. Uh, he is a he, he was a born-again Christian. He died, I believe, of a brain aneurysm a couple of months ago. When I found this out, I was really disturbed because I enjoyed watching his channel because everything I felt he um, offered up on his channel, uh, Scott Carpenter did, I felt uh, really confirmed to me exactly what these beings are. Uh, And he used uh, scripture and he came at it from a godly scriptural point of view, not a secular point of view. So if you have not heard of Scott Carpenter's YouTube channel dealing with a Sasquatch as Nephilim, I truly encourage you to look up Scott Carpenter's channel. Um, along that line, um, I will be doing what I can to have another interview soon, Lord willing, um, with someone, uh, with uh, another person uh, that I've interviewed before on the Sasquatch phenomenon. Uh, This person has agreed to do another interview with me soon, so hopefully, God willing, I will be able to bring this interview to you within the next, uh, hopefully, couple of weeks to next month or so. Uh, I need to get everything set up and uh, make sure that our times coordinate uh, and so on. Uh, But let me uh, play for you once again what Ronald Reagan stated in the UN the honey test. Um, I want to know if your honey is Excuse real. me. In the biggest case of food fraud in U.S. history, the jet... We're one. We're live. All right. Let me see if I can bring this up for you. In our obsession with antagonisms of the moment, we often forget how much unites all the members of humanity. Perhaps we need some outside universal threat to make us recognize this common bound. I occasionally think how quickly our differences worldwide would vanish if we were facing an alien threat from outside this world. And yet, I ask you, is not an alien force already among us? What could be more alien to the universal aspirations of our peoples than war 
and the threat of war. All right. So he's talking here about, and if you look up Reagan, he also he also deals with other videos uh, with the UFO phenomenon. Um, he also deals with other uh, other issues dealing with the uh, speaking um, uh, to Gorbachev at the time, who was the Russian president, Russian leader about uh, the UFO phenomenon. And he asked Gorbachev during a meeting, if the United States were to come under attack from an alien invasion, would you have our backs? And apparently the late Gorbachev stated, yes, he would. I'm telling you, these kings of the earth know who they're dealing with. John emphatically states he sees unclean beings that look like frogs going out where? To the kings of the earth to make to incite them to what? Make war with Christ when he returns. Interesting. They know what they're doing. They know what they're doing. And in between all of this, Satan is hard at work, promoting a one world religion agenda, promoting the beast system, uh, putting Jesuits and Freemasons in high ranking places in church buildings. And trust me, I know what I'm talking about. If you confront church leadership that Jesuits and Freemasons are creeping into their pulpits or creeping into the deacons or creeping into teachers in their churches, they don't wanna confront it. That rocks the cart too much. They want to keep their positions. Do you, you know, as you're supposed to, if you're a pastor or leader, you are supposed to vehemently want to go and vet the wolves from creeping into the congregations of God's people. Where are they? Instead, if you mention it, it's, oh, yeah, yeah, I heard about that. Well, yeah, and they blow you off. I know this from experience, folks. And it angers me. We should care more about vetting the wolves. I don't care if you've only got 10 people sitting in pews every single week. If you have Freemasons and Jesuits holding high-ranking positions in your quote-unquote church because you want to keep your position and you're not willing to get rid of the wolves and protect the sheep, you will answer for that. I promise you that. And I get very passionate about things like this. And actually, I have to ask the Lord to help me. I, I really do. <laughs> but this Pope of Rome is nothing more than a wolf in sheep's clothing, a ravening wolf, leading millions and millions and millions astray. Let me play this again for you. La mayor parte de los habitantes del planeta se declara creyentes. Esto debería provocar un diálogo entre las religiones. No debemos dejar de orar por él y colaborar con quienes piensan distinto. Confío en Buda. Creo en Dios. Creo en Jesucristo. Creo en Dios. Allah. Muchos piensan distinto, sienten distinto, buscan a Dios o encuentran a Dios de diversa manera. En esta multitud, en este abanico de religiones, hay una sola certeza que tenemos para todos. Todos somos hijos de Dios. Creo en el amor. Creo en el amor. Creo en el amor. Confío en vos para difundir mi petición de este mes. Que el diálogo sincero entre hombres y mujeres de diversas religiones conlleve frutos de paz y justicia. Confío en tu oración. Uh, you know, uh... I don't know about you, but I literally, I could picture myself, you know, honestly, <laughs> I could picture the Lord telling me like he told Peter, put away the sword, Angie. I get too, I get too fired up, I think, and too passionate when it comes to confronting people like the Pope, the Vatican, and Rome, and these people that are leading others astray. And you know, I've had people email me on this channel and say, Angie, don't you realize you're putting yourself at risk? that you're putting a huge like bullseye on yourself. I'm like, yeah, so what? God's, my hands, my times are in God's hands. Psalm 139 says, all of my days were written in his book before one came to be. I am not afraid of who watches this channel. As a matter of fact, I hope they do because they are hearing the truth and not all of God's children are blinded. Praise be to God. He's opening the eyes of his sons and daughters in these last days to people like him. 
that are holding idols up in front of your face and saying, we're all one. We all worship the same God. What utter, absolute blasphemy. And yes, I get angry about it. It, it is a righteous indignation. I feel the same indignation that Jesus felt when he gathered that whip and went around to the temple and started driving people out. Not because he's hateful, but because he had a righteous indignation for the honor and glory of the Father. That's what I feel about this man and exposing the Vatican system. <clears throat> Sorry, I need to calm down a bit. <laughs> but I just feel... And we also have Protestant pastors. And if I'm speaking to you, good. We have Protestant pastors out there that, that don't care if Freemasons or deacons in your churches or treasurers or teaching men's classes or co-ed classes. We don't care. We don't vet them. Why? Because we don't want to rock the boat and lose our position. We will give account. The books will be opened for, the, for those that are redeemed and those that are not redeemed. And what we have done, whether good or bad, in the body will be judged. If you are a leader in a church, are you teaching your people about these heresies? Are you being bold like a voice crying in the wilderness and not caring how people see you and exposing the truth? About Freemasons and the Vatican system and Jesuits graduating from Jesuit seminaries because the Jesuit oath of induction states clearly, as I've covered on this channel, they will infiltrate Protestant pulpits and lead many astray and they know what they're doing. This UFO, fallen angel phenomena is not going away, people. It isn't. It's only going to become more pronounced. Do you have a voice about it? Or is our only answer, well, I'm not taught about that in church. My family won't talk about it. They'll think I'm crazy if I talk about Sasquatch and modern day Nephilim and fallen angels and demonic spirits and UFO phenomenon and how all that plays into the last days and the, the soon coming of Christ. I, nah, I don't want to talk about that. They'll, they'll just think I'm crazy. So the secular, new age, unbelieving world can have a voice on this topic, but we can't as the body of Christ. I want this channel to change that. So I'm asking for prayer. I'm asking for prayer. It has been my passion that God would make my life count for something. That he would use me in his kingdom to reach people. Please pray for me. If it is God's will, I'm not going to go chasing L.A. Marzulli down. Okay, it has to be something God wants done. I am in agreement with him on this burgeoning situation with UFOs that has not gone away. As a matter of fact, before I end this video, um, I want to give you a little preview of something that, that's coming up. All right. Uh, I was outside taking, I, I love photography, and for those of you who follow my Facebook page, sometimes I like to post photography on constellations and sunsets and sunrises, and, and uh, especially uh, the stars in the sky. Um, I happened to be out one evening using my night vision camera, and I caught some things on my night vision camera that make no sense to me. I was not looking for it. I promise you that I would never do such a thing and seek those things out. I think the Lord allowed me to see some things that I will try and post on this channel in like a slide presentation for you, or I'll even try and show you on my phone uh, you know, until I can upgrade my laptop. Um, I caught some things through night vision that when I held my phone up and I looked, you know, I, I was looking up at the sky and I was capturing the dipper and the constellations and, and the moon. And as I was doing that, I started seeing other things. But if I looked to the side with just my, my flat, my normal vision, I couldn't see it. But if I looked through the, the, the night vision on my device, there it was. And it was multiple things. Did the Lord allow that for a reason? For me to warn people that there are things going on in the unseen realms that are now becoming more visible? Yeah, I believe. Uh, it could, the veil is becoming thinner, I should say. Um, between those things that are visible and things that are invisible. I believe the veil is becoming thinner. So when I looked with my naked eye, I couldn't see anything. I even presented my pictures to a professional source that deals with this type of phenomena, and uh, two people confirmed for me that what I saw was exactly what David Grush saw when he gave testimony in Congress. So I submitted my photos. I'll leave that private to who I submitted them to, but they confirmed that my photos that I captured on night vision were identical to what one of the whistleblowers was in Congress, 
David Grush and what he's what he captured on camera. Now, I, I don't go out there looking for it every night. As a matter of fact, do I still enjoy going out and taking my pictures with my night vision of the moon and the stars and, and sunsets? Of course I do. And I haven't seen anything since because I was not looking for that. You don't go looking for things like that. If things like that happen, maybe it's because the Lord's trying to show me something, teach me something, expose something. But I'm going to pray to him about showing you these pictures that I captured, okay, with my night vision camera. I'm also going to have an upcoming video interviewing uh, a woman, at, uh, hopefully her husband will want to join in too, about the Sasquatch activity that is going on in her property, which I believe is nothing other than an intimidation and harassment of a household that belongs to God. And when myself and, and this woman and her husband, we walk the ground of her yard, we pray over her property and we command in the name of Jesus Christ, quoting his word, it is written, it is written, it is written against these things. And do you know I'm happily, happy to report that it has been at least a couple of months since any orbs have shown up on her camera or, or any major damage has been done to her property. So Lord willing, I'll get out there again soon. Uh, this person lives about an hour away from me. Uh, I want to make sure that I can coordinate schedules. Again, please be in prayer for me about this upcoming interview about the Sasquatch phenomena, which I do believe with um, Scott Carpenter, our, our brother who is now with the Lord, that they are a descendant of the Nephilim. And I believe that they are a part of this whole end time phenomena. Please pray for me if it is God's will that uh, either I can interview L.A. Marzulli or he will have me on his channel. I have it on good word that that is a very good possibility. So if that is the case, that is in God's sovereign hands, I have no control over that. So please bring prayer that if it is God's will, that will happen. Um, I greatly admire L.A., and I agree with his work on the UFO and Nephilim phenomenon. Um, and I uh, pray the Lord that hopefully we will be able to coordinate something as brother and sister in Christ and uh, support one another in getting this word out. Uh, we are in the last days, guys. And I don't put dates and times on this channel. I never will. I don't believe in that. I believe the Lord says we'll know the season of his coming, but we won't know the exact date and time. And neither are we to try and do that. Um, but I figured I'd ask you um, to comment uh, on these things, you know, on the papacy, the latest paperwork that was signed in Dubai, pray for me concerning this L.A. Marzulli situation. Hopefully we, he and I can talk. Um, I wanted to read to you the email I received from a subscriber about the video I made about relying on Mary for intercession. Uh, I wanted to discuss the Sasquatch Nephilim phenomenon and Scott Carpenter's, the late Scott Carpenter, our brother in Christ YouTube channel, if you have not checked that out. And I want to end with this. There is nothing new under the sun, Ecclesiastes tells us. What has been will be again. And part of recognizing the season and the time that we live in is remembering that statement from the book of Ecclesiastes. What has been will be again. And what did Jesus tell us? As it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be at the coming.